GitHub Copilot X, a ton of AI news, including ChatGPT plugins, a new LaTeX replacement, and a pick of the week that combines two of my favorite things, flying across the country and challenging yourself to do new things. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. And okay, we've got a ton of news this week. I am sad that I don't have a GitHub Copilot shirt, so I had to wear this very nice blue GitHub shirt instead. All right, let's get into it. As I said, I really wanted to wear a Copilot shirt because that's a lot of what our news is about this week. More specifically, GitHub Copilot X. And GitHub Copilot, if you are not familiar, is our AI-based pair programming assistant that can help you in your coding tasks it's awesome, but we're not stopping here with code completion. Our CEO, Thomas Domke, announced GitHub Copilot X this week, which is a look at how you can bring the power of Copilot to the entire developer experience. And yes, the name is pronounced X like Liam Hemsworth. Thanks, Martin, for that joke. Not Eck or Ten. Uh, I, for one, thought that we should have used some DMX music for our announcement. X go give it to you. What? But that's probably why I'm not in charge of a billion dollar business. Anyway, there is a lot to unpack. Let's go through the highlights. So the first thing is GitHub Copilot chat. And I've often described GitHub Copilot as chat GPT but for code. But like, what if you could put chat GPT inside your code editor? Well, Copilot chat is basically that. Uh, it's a chat GPT-like sidebar in your code editor so that you can generate unit tests, explain code blocks, or propose bug fixes. And despite the name, it's not really a chat window because it's deeply embedded into your IDE. And we've got extensions for it for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. I've got a link uh, for this in the show notes and description. Another new feature that's gonna be coming soon is called GitHub Copilot Voice, which we previously called Hey GitHub. And this lets you interact with Copilot using your voice. As I said, I've got links um, below where you can sign up for the technical preview. Uh, next up, let's talk about GitHub Copilot for pull requests. This is also available um, for you to enroll on a per repo basis in technical preview. And what it does is it's bringing AI generated descriptions to your pull requests. And so this is actually powered by OpenAI's new GPT-4 model. And it's basically going to kind of go through um, your code and, and use tags that are automatically filled out by GitHub Copilot based on the changed code, and developers can then review or modify the suggested description. And this is just the start. Uh, internally, we're testing new capabilities where GitHub Copilot will automatically suggest sentences and paragraphs as developers create pull requests by dynamically pulling in information about code changes, which is slick. And we're working on a new feature where GitHub Copilot will automatically warn developers if they're missing sufficient testing for a PR, and then it can suggest possible uh, tests that can be edited, accepted, or rejected based on the project's needs. Very cool. So as, again, I've got a link for that technical preview sign up down below. We are also launching a GitHub Copilot for Docs, and this is really great. It's using a chat interface to provide users with AI-generated responses to questions about documentation. So this could be questions that developers might have about a framework or a language or technology that they're using. Uh, to get this started, we are using documentation for React, Azure Docs, and MDM so that we can learn and iterate quickly with the developers and the users of those projects. And we're hoping to open this up to more documentation, including your internal docs. I've got a link down below to sign up for that waitlist too. Very cool. And last but not least, we've got, might just be my favorite GitHub Copilot X announcement, Copilot CLI. That's right, it's Copilot in your terminal. And not only can you ask it questions like how to, how to write a specific pipe for FFmpeg, uh, you can also use natural language to do stuff with GitHub or even search across your machine. I've been using this for only a couple of days now, but it's awesome, I love it, and it combines some of my favorite things, terminals and Copilot. I've got links to sign up for that wait list down below too. Um, as I said, I've just got a ton of links down below to the signups and the landing pages for everything that we just talked about. And be sure to stay tuned to our YouTube channel in the coming weeks because we're gonna have more previews and teases of this stuff because it's awesome. 
Also, also, if you are interested in getting started with GitHub Copilot as it exists now, my girl Roselle Scarlett and I are each hosting a webinar next week on getting started with Copilot. So check that out. I will have links uh, for those sessions down below too. Moving on, if you want to know more about how to get the most um, out of GitHub Copilot or other stuff for your business or enterprise, don't miss GitHub Galaxy, which will be taking place March 28th through the 31st. That is next week. It's free and you can sign up at galaxy.github.com. And now let's cover very quickly some of the other new AI news that happened this week in a new segment that I'm calling Christina's Generative AI Roundup. <laughs> Snappy, right? All right, first, Google's Bard. Its um, AI chat assistant is now in preview for users in some countries. I got access, I haven't had a chance to play with it too much, but it is really great to see more of these assistants and bots in this space. There are also some really fun memes of people asking Bard about Bing Bot and Bing Bot about Bard. I like it when the robots fight, or are friends, or whatever. Also, Adobe announced some of its generative AI tools for creators this week, um, calling this Adobe Firefly. This looks really dope, and it looks like a great way for people who are actually artistic, so not me, to leverage some of the power of generative models. And last but not least, OpenAI announced some plugins for ChatGPT, meaning that you can now have even more power inside ChatGPT. Um, so far, these plugins are only available to people on a wait list, and I don't have access, but uh, uh, there's plugins for Expedia, Instacart, Wolfram, OpenTable, and Zapier, and OpenAI also is making some of its own plugins for a code interpreter and a browser. So I've got links to all these announcements down below too. And now it's time for my GitHub project spotlight. And this is where I highlight a project on GitHub. And this week, my pick is Typest, which is a new open sourced markup based typesetting system that is basically what LaTeX would be if LaTeX weren't a terrible user experience. Look, I know, I know all the LaTeX lovers are going to come at me in the comments. Bring it on. I said what I said, and I stand by it. LaTeX is terrible, but it also does things that nothing else does and is really great for people in academia or math. Uh, Types has actually been in the work for like four years and it's been in a closed preview for three months, but now it's out in the open. The compiler is open sourced and I've only spent a little bit of time with it, but I really like it. I really like the design. Now the big question is, will the research community and math nerds love it? I sure hope so. So I've got links to the Types website and um, their GitHub repo down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So. I'm a pretty frequent flyer, not as frequent as I was pre-pandemic, but I still fly a solid 90 to 100,000 miles a year. And because most of my flights are over five hours, I usually spend a lot of time looking at the Delta in-flight entertainment system, which is why I loved Paul Mandel's blog post, uh, his video time lapse, and his resulting project called the In-Flight Entertainment Challenge. And this is how Paul describes what he did. On a recent flight from NYC to SFO, I decided to try to recreate as much of the Delta in-flight entertainment system as I could. And you can see the resulting work, as I said, on um, a website that he deployed to Vercel and through his GitHub repo, you can also enjoy his video time lapse. Also, give his blog post to read because it's really awesome and I think had some really great considerations. Really great work, Paul. I wish that I could say that, you know, this is going to encourage me to spend six hours of a flight working like this, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm going to continue to watch reruns of Friends or Parks and Recreation while tweeting or on Slack. What do you do when you fly? And what do you think of all the Copilot X announcements or anything else we mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below. That's gonna do it for me this week. If you like this episode, give us a like and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.